joins us now. Good morning to you, Bev. Yeah, good morning, um, Julia. Thank it's quite for easy for us to look at this story and go, well, this is all a bit silly. I mean, what? What are you talking strap? I mean, strap ons? And goodness me, how on earth would you not realise that someone was a biological woman, not a man? OK, this is this is this is a biological woman living uh, a life looking like wearing clothes as as a as a man convincing enough for certainly three women in a in in long in long term relationships uh, with this person um and these these women when they discovered that this actually was a woman and not a real man a biological man um obviously pressed charges and it turns out you know target seeing had become pretty abusive and unpleasant when when confronted um but, <laughs> This raises so many different issues, doesn't it? Tell, tell us what your reaction is to this story. Well, this is this is a simple case of, of sex by deception, isn't it? And sex by deception is a crime. I mean, where, if any in any kind of sexual relationship between two people, um, you need informed consent. And one of the, the a key aspect of informed consent is knowing what sex the person is. And we're using sex in two different different meanings here. And obviously, I mean male or female. Yeah. And uh, you know, so. I, it, it's really an, an important aspect of, of any kind of sexual relationship to know whether someone's male or female. But there are people who are now um, campaigning to get rid of the offence of, uh, uh, of of sex by, by deception. And Stonewall, for instance, thinks it shouldn't count because what matters is what's in your head, your gender or your yes. gender identity, and and not not your sex. And actually, we anybody who's been following the Alison Bailey uh, um, hearing in which she, she is suing actually Stonewall for uh, for discrimination has heard um, a, a spokesperson for Stonewall say under oath that there's no such thing as male or female bodies. Yeah, I mean, good um, luck with that. Just, I mean, my yeah, thing... People just have, simply have their own bodies. Now, this is yes. a serious... And, and we've had, we've had, a, we've had a, a, an MP say that, you know, babies aren't born male or female. They're assigned gender by, by their parents or by society. I'm pretty sure when my daughter was born, it was a girl. She was a girl and she's still a girl. Now, the thing is, so, Julia, you said at the beginning that it's a good thing the kids are at school, but um, what are they learning at school? <laughs> um, and actually, um, we hear again and again that at school they're being taught that you might be a gender that's different from your sex. Yeah, and so also, and also told that there, are, early age. there oh, are many, many oh. different genders, you know, up to 200 genders. No, there aren't. There, there are two. There's male and female. They have a very, very tiny number of people born, and I think very, in very difficult circumstances for them and their families, um, it, it, with, with, you know, with, with sexual organs for, for both sexes, and, and, and very difficult decisions are made in those cases. Oh. Uh, but that, that is not the same as the trans issue. I mean, this is the sort of story a lot of people People could be sort of sharing on social media and laughing about it. But we were so, you know, basically, if these women think they're in a relationship with a man, it turns out they've been in a relationship with a woman because th this is a biological woman. Um, I, of course, I would face Ofcom complaints and, and they'd probably be upheld if I said, if I referred to this transgender man as she. I, I, I'm sort of, you know, the requirements now to not be transphobic because I have to say, say he, even though. Well, this, we this person was born a female named Hannah Walters. Now, this isn't about sort of being rude to people or being transphobic or anything like that. It's about talking about the reality, isn't it? The reality yeah. is for these women, they they thought they were having a relationship with a man and actually they were having a relationship with a woman. Oh, that's the reality. Yeah. Now, and, and it happens the other way around as well. But there has been an issue, and you brought this up with Stonewall, this idea that you know you shouldn't even recognise uh, these differences they should they shouldn't even be this this it shouldn't even be considered an assault in that circumstance because what if, if I say I'm a woman or I say I'm a man that is the end of the story but we well, see this well, happening with, yeah, we, with, with can I ask you, we see this particularly happening on lesbian dating sites tell us what's going on there because this is quite quite a big issue for the lesbian community isn't it well yes you see on some lesbian dating sites you'll find maybe 40 percent of of, of of the people on that so-called lesbian dating site will be people with male bodies we were told that we're not allowed to say male bodies because there's no such thing as male and female bodies but you and i know it's actually quite simple julia as long as you can distinguish between reality and what is in a person's mind um it's clear whether people have male or female bodies but it's not very pleasant for a, an 18 year old girl who's going on a dating site for a first time maybe nervously looking for for a girl girlfriend to be approached by someone with a male body and wanting to say no uh, politely and kindly without saying actually I'm only interested in in actual but then being told women. they're transphobic and there's a lot of bullying going yes. on and, and and again I'm sorry I don't think a lot of these let's not say people with male bodies men I don't think a lot of these men are actually genuinely trans men I think they're actually abusing 
um, uh, uh, the battle. You, you trans, said trans men. You you, you trans, fell into trap there, trans Julie. Women. Oh God, trans. I lose track. I think we all do, but I don't think they are trans women. I think they are just men who are abusive. Uh, I think there are genuine trans people. I do, you know, genuinely believe that they are born into a different body, um, and I think we should give them every respect and empathy and and help them to live live their best lives. However. However, I think there are also an awful lot of, frankly, abusive, perverted men who are using that empathy in that respect to try and gain access to vulnerable women. Well, it isn't possible to tell the difference, of course. And lesbians do have a right to have our own sites, our own dating sites. And um, we've seen people that describe lesbians as, as sexual racists. Um, uh, for, for for only being only only wanting to have sex with with other um, actual women, so I mean th this is a serious case, and it's lesbians who have faced this kind of problem more than gay men, and which yeah. is why gay men are now gradually waking up to the fact that this is a problem for them as well. Yeah, absolutely. Really good to talk to you, Bev Jackson, co-founder of the LGB Alliance. Good <laughs>